It's time for Albuquerque Real Estate Talk with Tigo and Tracy Venturi of the Venturi Group of Real Broker here in Albuquerque. Episode 468, I believe we're on, Tracy. Yeah, boy, it's been a, a great week in real estate too, huh, Tigo? It has. There's actually been some some pretty good news in the real estate world. and uh, But we've got a, a few different stories. Uh, something about uh, quit claim deeds I wanted to talk about. They're not quick claim deeds or quit quit Q U I T yes claim deeds. We want to talk about that because something came up that, uh, I, th I think people need to understand what, what they're all about. Um, as well as homeowners associations. Um, but the, the story I wanted to, to start with Tracy is we, we did a little research on new home construction and what's going on around the city, uh, in the Metro Albuquerque area. Oh, and by the way, um, if you want to reach us, we're the Venturi Group at Real Broker 505-448-8888. All right. Every year, Tracy, home builders, this yeah. time of year, year end, they're they're thinking about they're thinking about their uh, inventory, what's going on with it, um, what they have on the on the shelf, and and they're they're they can be very efficient home sellers when they need to be. They sure can. You know, we did a quick roundup this week because our uh, real estate agents on our team are, you know, available to help people with new construction. And we've got um, quite a lot of new construction homes going on in the whole metro where people could buy and move in like today or move in within the next few months. Houses, you know, that will be ready right now or are under construction for, you know, they call them spec homes, right? They're speculating yeah. that in January, February, and March, people will need a house to buy to move into right away. Yeah, so they're building them without a buyer in place, which right. is which is pretty common. But but yeah. they're, they're not doing a lot of them, but they are doing some. Well, and every builder's a little bit different. Some of our um, local builders, you know, the production builders that do quite a few homes every year, um, some of them have uh, a company philosophy to have homes ready to go that are ready to move into. Some of the builders have lots and people pick their lot, pick their floor plan, pick the finishes, and then the house is built. So sometimes you wait six to nine months or so for that house to be built or longer, right? Yeah. Just depending on what you build and where it fits in their schedule of, of getting that house built. Right. Um, so we did a quick end of year roundup. Now it's not necessarily the builder's year end for their books, so to speak, for their mm -hmm. accounting, mm -hmm. but there is some push with some builders to have some of the properties that are done and ready to be lived in sold by the end of the year. So there's some amazing incentives going on right now. If you're thinking about um, perhaps making a change and one of those new homes works for you, a lot of our builders are doing special incentives with interest rates where they're either bought down for a short por portion of the amount of the loan. So instead of a, a lower rate for the full 30 years, it's maybe the first one, two, or three years of the loan where they are going to buy down that interest rate for you to help you ease into the interest rate. And that's what we're seeing a lot of that is is where they're helping out with the the mortgage rate. They're, right. they're again where they're putting a extra percent or two or whatever toward the the mortgage and basically prepaying so that the mortgage company can lower the rate. And we're right. seeing I don't know, 5.99, I think. 4.99. 4.99. In a couple neighborhoods with DR Horton, including in, on the west side near um, the trails, Ventana Ranch area, Cat, Camino Catalonia. Um, so 4.99 even there, as well as Las Lunas and other areas. Now, this is all limited time. So if it's something you're interested in, it's until the money um, runs out, really. Like for DR Horton, they buy a, a book of loan amount money mm -hmm. and so once they've had enough people take advantage of it there is no more so sooner than later call us if you're thinking about new construction or want to learn more uh 448-8888 is our phone number we can connect you with one of the great realtors on our team that specializes in new construction but it's great when you get a realtor working for you tigo on new construction because a lot of times what we find is people go out for a drive and they see a new home for sale sign, you know, uh, one of the builder's signs and they stop at the sales office and they find a house to buy. But what they might miss is some of the things we know to ask for, ask the builder to throw in this or that or reduce this or that. But there might be another builder half a mile away that they don't know about. 
that they might like their, that house better. So as realtors, we can help make sure they know the whole market and what's available, as well as ask for some incentives if if we know what builders might do. Well, and it, there's also the, the, the bias is obviously the, the salesperson in the sales office is trying to sell that particular product, right? Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, a third party that's your, your representative can, you know, help you navigate, you know, maybe what's best for you and look at all the different things and help you balance it out. So, yeah. Um, so let me talk about a few yes. of the builders. Okay. So we know of one, a uh, fairly local builder, New Mexico type builder. Um, they're offering in some neighborhoods and some houses forty to fifty thousand dollars towards either price reduction, uh, buy down of the interest rate, some extra um, appliances. So maybe you could get uh, a fridge, washer, dryer, and maybe upgrade them if you wanted something special. Uh, maybe it could include some landscaping in the backyard because most of these new construction homes come with the front yard landscape, but not the back. So there's a lot of money that they're offering towards the purchase of that home to help make it more affordable for somebody to kind of offset maybe their monthly payment or to do the buy down to make their monthly payment better because the buy down of the interest rate goes a lot further in reducing your monthly mortgage than the, and then reducing the price. Right. Now, which we, we talked about last yeah, week. Yeah, we talked about that whole thing that that 1% equals 10% uh, equation in, in the real estate world, which is 1% reduction in your mortgage rate equates to about 10% in actual purchasing power or cost of the home, if you will, if you want to uh, call it that. Um, so yeah, th there's a lot of different things out there, Tracy. I mean, I've seen $20,000 discounts, $40,000 discounts, $20,000 flex cash, which if, if you don't really understand what that means, they, they, they'll, they'll put a dollar amount, a dollar value out there that the, the home buyer can use and it can be toward upgrades it could be toward putting window blinds in the house it could be landscaping right it could be buying down the mortgage rate right you know, so it's it's uh again one of those things that, that are available and and you're gonna see more of those type of things this time of year a little bit slower time of year in the real estate world um where where builders are a little more motivated to to wheel and deal so yep yep and we talked to a lot of them we talked to sue goheen we talked to Eric Corpus, we talked yeah. to, I mean, all, new home sales reps all over the city, Northeast Heights, Las Lunas, Rio Rancho, Albuquerque. Okay, let's see, how many can you list? Amherston, okay. Hakes, yeah. D.R. Horton, Centex, Pulte, Twilight, Abrazo. You're doing pretty good. Okay, who else, Tigo? Come on. I think you got most okay, of them. Okay, I named a lot of them. Um, Stillbrook. So, Stillbrooks, yeah, Northeast. So let us know what you'd like to know about new home construction. We appreciate you all listening and letting us know um, and that we can assist you with new construction. The um, fun to do. I love to show new construction homes. It's like one of my favorite things. So good stuff. Nice weekend too. You know how, how it is some, sometimes just like a certain topic just kind of bubbles up to the surface. So I'm changing the topic on us. Okay. I was going to say, can you imagine like we could get somebody under contract on a new construction home this weekend and they could be in by Christmas. That's okay. true. Not by Thanksgiving, but by Christmas. Yeah, no, that's for sure. Or the new year. That's a great point. Over the no, holidays great, great when point. maybe the kids are out of school, they could pack up and help you move. Yep. Okay, yep. change the subject. Okay, change the subject. So what I was saying is sometimes there's just something, some that topic up. that kind of bubbles up and suddenly it's just, you, you see it everywhere. And what what it was for me this week was quit claim deed. Quit claim deeds. Um, you already clarified. It's Q-U-I-T. It's quit. quit. Yep. It's quit claim. It's not quick. I right. hear people say that all the time. Yeah, I have um, too. And so I wanted to break it down because I want to make sure people kind of, well, not kind of, but, but understand what a, a quit claim actually is. It's yeah. used in real estate quite often. Um, we see it, especially in divorce situations, let's say, yeah. where um, two people go their separate ways. One of them keeps the house, um, but that person that, that's leaving needs to basically be out of ownership of that property. And then uh, quit claim would be the thing to do that. Right. And, but what happened was I was, I'm not going to go into too much de detail, but I was talking with somebody and she knew I was in a real estate business. We were talking real estate and she was talking about how she'd gone through a divorce and, but they were going to keep the home and they're going to share it and, and they're going to rent it and they're going to have, you know, 
co-ownership of the home, even though, you know, and she said, yeah, I sold, I, I did a quick, she said quick. She said, I did a quick claim. And I said, you mean a quick claim? And she goes, yeah, I guess, I guess. I, I said, well, that, that releases you of ownership of that property, but right? But not the mortgage. But not the mortgage. And she's like, well, I still own it, right? I'm like, um. No, you just own the loan. I'm, I, <laughs> you probably need to get clarification on that. And I felt really bad because I think she kind of like went pale. I said, quit. It's quit claim, meaning you quit any claim to ownership of this particular asset, right? And I think she like was like, I think I freaked her out and I feel a little bad, but I mean, I had to tell her the truth. So let me give this example. So okay. it's a way to, let's let's say your friend has a we, puzzle. We have, do we have to do that we're not lawyers? I yeah, we're we, not lawyers. Okay. We can't give legal advice. Okay. So the, here's the example. Imagine your friend has a puzzle with a quit claim deed. They give you the puzzle, but they don't promise that all the pieces are there or that it's their puzzle to give away. They're just saying whatever part of this puzzle I might own, I am giving it to you. When it comes to real property like a house or land, and people say, here, I am giving you this house or land. I'm signing ownership to you through this of whatever ownership I have. But if there is a loan on that, an underlying mortgage on that property, you're still on that mortgage. You the ones. You the one giving, giving away the, your ownership. Yeah. You're still responsible for it until it's paid off or it's refinanced into the other person that you gave it to their name, yeah. gave yeah. or took monetary for. So. Well, and, and, it, and again, it came up with, uh, in, in again, for me this week where, uh, a friend of mine who's who I've done a lot of work with over the years, who's in the construction business, called me and said, "Hey, my mom is, or not mom. I'm sorry, his his uh, his uh, mother-in-law um, with the transfer ownership to his wife, and and you know he was just asking me about it, and you know how do you do that, and and that was it, you know. So um, just you know, anytime you're dealing with something like this, though, you should get a lawyer involved because Tracy, think about how many times we've been involved in a real estate transaction and somebody says, yeah, we have a quit claim. That person did it, but they never recorded it. It's right. sitting in a drawer somewhere. Right. I mean, it's still a legal document if it's all been done properly. And we can help them with the process to get it taken care of. But I think you're right though, that a lot of people don't understand that what a quit claim is. So good clarification. Yeah. So let's talk something else. Yeah. Let's change of subject again. So I was on the Nextdoor app this morning and I saw a big thread about somebody complaining about their homeowners association. And that's, it was, that's so unusual. I've never heard oh no. anybody clump complain about their HOA never. Uh, and especially ever. not on Nextdoor. I've uh, never yeah. heard oh, anyone yeah. complain on Nextdoor. Never. Um, it just caught my eye because it was about HOAs, of course, but yeah. It was it was interesting because of course there are people who love HOAs and people who hate HOAs and people who get into a house with an HOA that don't know what it's all about they've never lived in an HOA before and then whatever the rule is that they might not realize whether it's your trash can has to be in at night of trash day and they get a letter or they put an RV in their driveway and an RV isn't allowed or whatever they did that they get a letter about right um then they're upset because the HOA is so terrible and I can't believe that I can't do this. This is my property or whatever. However, people rant. Well, it's funny because what I found funny was somebody finally put a photo up and um, somebody was complaining about their neighbor. And they, they sent a picture and it said, is this your neighbor? And it was a picture of a backyard just full of junk. I mean, like a rickety fence, all like all the paint's gone and it's sort of falling over and there's junk everywhere in the backyard. And you can see the back of the house where the trim is all faded. Everything about the property is run down. And the person who had originally put the post up said, no, that's not my neighbor. And of course, the point was, that's because you have an HOA that's keeping your property values up and making sure that the houses around you are kept up so that your house still looks good and you don't have a house like that next door. But it was it was so ironic to me that the person who had originally made the post didn't understand what that picture was all about and signifying they had to point it out to that person. But of course, that photo then generated a bunch of stuff. And honestly, I didn't spend that much time on it this yeah, morning, Tigo. Yeah. But it's you know, it sounds like you did. Yeah, no, it was. I, it was. Well, I, no, I think that's a really good point. I mean, I, th there's some some neighborhoods on the west side here in Albuquerque where 
in it, actually it's any any town any part of town where you can drive from one neighborhood to the next and you can tell which neighborhoods are in an HOA and which ones are not. And, 100%. And, you know, and I have pointed that out many times when yeah. I'm out showing homes to people and we're in the car together and we're driving around and they're kind of not sure if they want to live in an HOA. And I'm like, you will notice when we go to this next neighborhood, there isn't an HOA. Even within Cabazon in Rio Rancho, Southern Rio Rancho, Master Plan. I wasn't going to mention names. But... I, I, so, yeah, there's just one neighborhood in there. It's kept up, yeah. but it's different. You can yeah. feel it. It's just not as pristine as the rest of Cabazon where there's HOA. And many people don't realize there is a part, part of Cabazon where there's no HOA. Let's do a quick HOA, Homeowners Association Primer, and what they cover, what they do. So HOA is a, an entity that is, uh, has responsibility for managing the neighborhood which includes rules. So, you know, the first piece of a homeowners association is a set of rules. And then the set of rules will have some sort of sort of enforcement vehicle. Um, you generally have a, you know, a board that, that, that oversees it. Um, but then there's certain things that a homeowners association will pay for. Could be maintenance. Very common that you'll have like common area maintenance, common area landscaping maintenance. That's pretty common. Um, but then you you might have other things like uh, insurance if it's um, well, like in a condo association, you'll definitely have things like insurance and uh, property maintenance. maintenance even exactly. Um, there may be security, there may be a gate. So gated neighborhoods are pretty much always going to be an HOA because you have to have that to manage that particular you know amenity for a neighborhood. right. Um, so it it really just depends. and you know one of the things um, I, I think, People get excited about purchasing home, and they're they're going into a, a a neighborhood that has an HOA. And when you're buying a home, you're bombarded with so many different pieces of paper and documents and agreements that you have to 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 look through, from lending to to all the other stuff. You may have overlooked reading through the HOA rules and regs and and understanding what what you're allowed and not allowed to do. So make sure that, you know, when you're purchasing a home, you're doing your due diligence. And part of that is reviewing the HOA as well as the CCNRs, right? Covenants and restrictions. Yeah. So for sure. You know, one of the things that this makes me think of, Tigo, is I had somebody say, well, um, if there's no HOA, there can't be some CCNRs on the neighborhood, right? Not true. Not true. There can still be covenants, restrictions, and conditions for that subdivision, neighborhood, whatever. Almost every place that we work has some sort of restrictions, some sort of covenants for that area. And in that case of no HOA, then it would be village, city, county, whoever the municipality yeah, is. Yeah, the, the zoning rules for, for zoning whatever rules. that property is. So, um, you know, it's uh, unfortunately we need rules and regs so everybody plays nice together, and that's just you know I I know people get upset in there when you know they get a they get a a letter because they have three weeds in their front yard. But I think the one that's uh, you know I personally would understand is when somebody has a travel trailer or an RV and they need to park it for a day or two in their yard or in their driveway so they can load it up for their big trip. And I don't know. Careful, Tracy. I you know. are treading on thin ice there. I know. I know. That's yeah. that. Yeah. My thought. My thought there is, you know, if somebody's not permanently parking it there. It's really hard to load up your RV when it's parked in a, you know, a, a lot somewhere miles from your house, and it it's like, come on, give people a little slack. But then the rules are there, I guess. So it just depends on what it says. But most we, of them accommodate. You, you, you're, you're getting really controversial here. So maybe okay, we, should, we better move on. We should debate pickleball versus tennis because that's oh. like the most controversial thing in the world right now. Okay, sorry. I is there controversy? Oh, so Tigo, I got to talk about a house that's coming soon okay. and a few other properties. Okay. We have the cutest fuchsia house coming on the market. Fuchsia. It's a really cute like house. Like as in paint color? As in the exterior oh, of yes. the house I saw it. is bright pink. Bright pink. My favorite color, actually, fuchsia. Um, the particular home is at, let's see. Borellis, right? Borellis. Yeah. 1009 Borellis Road Southwest. It's a one-bedroom, one-bath in the Borellis neighborhood. 
completely updated. We have a list of all the things that have been updated on, on that house. And by the way, it's an Adobe. It's a one bedroom Adobe, cute as a button. Um, it's 210,000 and it's coming soon. So when, as soon as it's ready to be shown, we'd love to show it to you. So call us and let's make a plan. But I mean, everything's been updated and it was yeah. updated not for resale. So it, and the color was picked because somebody in particular it was being updated for. And now it's this bright pink house that's just adorable. So that one's awesome. We have a few others that just came on the market um, this for this weekend. And the first one is... 6623 Charwood Road, Northwest, 310,000, the three bedroom, two bath, two car garage. Um, it's, uh, let's see, near Charwood Northwest. It's like Taylor Ranch area, okay. Paradise Hills. Mm -hmm. um, so that one just came on the market. If you're looking for that, great little house. Um, and then we have one at 1325 8th Street Northwest. So this is just east of the sawmill near Mountain and 12th. Just yeah. 8th is three blocks east of 12th, yeah, yeah. in case you can count. Um, Wait, another, my calculator. another completely remodeled house. Okay. That's got, I mean, from electric to plumbing to, to insulation, everything. So that one also, 334.9 um at 1325 8th street another one in rio rancho in um river's edge community of rio rancho it's three hundred and sixty four thousand five hundred. i saw the views to the mountain from that house very very beautiful so it's a 1800 square feet four bedroom um two bath two car garage so that one's going to be open on sunday the 19th from one to three so don't miss it if you're looking for something in that area. You know, we have a lot of people who love River's Edge for commuting to Santa Fe. And for the view, this one just happens to have it. So yeah. happy happy to uh, represent that property. We also listed a piece of land in Corrales this week that's up high, kind of on the northwest end of Corrales. Uh, it's a fairly large um, parcel. It's 3.4 acres, and there are some properties around it. Um, you'd need to extend the utilities, I think, or even maybe Correct. you'd want to yeah. subdivide it. Yep. Um, so that one's listed at 485000 So there's a quick summary of yeah. some of the more exciting properties. Of course, on our website, welcomehomeabq.com, mm -hmm. we have lots of other links. So all of the open houses that are listed in the MLS are there, not just the ones we're doing, because we have a few other open houses this weekend as a team. And that's, you know, one of the things we love to do when we represent properties is have this big grand open house and do a lot of marketing and, and invite people to come and, and see the house. So, yeah. you know, it's Thanksgiving next week, Tigo. I know, just like that. And we're coming towards the end of the year. And, you know, a lot of times um, we, we had this come up again this week where somebody said, well, I'm going to wait till after the first of the year to put my house on the market because nobody wants to look at houses this time of year. It's Thanksgiving. It's Christmas. It's New Year's. It's all these holidays. And I'm like, wait, but don't do that. If you need to sell, let's get your house on the market because only serious buyers out, are out looking. It's not like looky lose, right? um looky lose i know that, funny that's, word. One, that's one of those terms we use but that's probably not really nice but i don't yeah. know I, mean, yeah. I shouldn't look at the origin so anyway we have houses sell and usually it's a very serious buyer who needs to find a house and move this time of year yeah, yeah. and when people have extra time off from work over the holidays we do find that that's when they're out looking at houses also they're not all just out shopping or buying food for holidays or things so the other thing is we have um, a program for a cash offer for people. And if that program works for them and it works for the company that buys those houses, you can choose up to 90 days out to close on that accepted contract. So if you want to sell and you have some reasons why it would be helpful for know you've got to, to know you have a solid sale and you can pick a date to close between two weeks from now and 90 days from now, that's an option for you to get through the holidays, make really solid plans for wherever you're moving to, to know that your house is sold. And you know, Tigo, there's a lot of people that works well for because we get some really nice offer prices for the convenience. There is a little service fee for that. But um, you know, for a lot of people that have kids, dogs, uh, elderly or people that are um, in poor health, having their house shown can be quite the burden. So we've been really thankful to help some people out of some difficult situations with that. Okay. Okay. All right. 
Market data time. Oh, you're sitting there going, I can't wait to talk stats. No, I, a couple things. I, 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 we, you know, let off the show talking about how it's been a, a great um, week in real estate news. Okay, let me rephrase that. There's been good news in real estate. How about that? I in, get to in, go show houses next, okay. and I just realized the time. So you get to wrap it up. Okay, with stats. I'll wrap it up. So, okay. Uh, See you all next week. So, so we have um, first off mortgage rates been some really good news on mortgage rates over the last uh, few weeks here and and we we've, we've really we've improved about a half a percent in mortgage rates so that's that's uh, one good um, thing happening in the real estate world so you know again we we talk about it all the time how the cost of lending can really affect your monthly payment a in a big way. So that's good news. Um, the other thing is I had the opportunity to be on KOA TV the other um, day talking about the real estate market here in the Albuquerque area. And of course, you know, it was, it was a very short uh, hit, but one of the things they talked about, and I, I wanted to address this was how home prices have dropped since uh, last month and the month before. And if you've you know been listening, you kind of, you kind of know this story, but I want to reiterate it. And that is, Median price dropped from June, July, August, basically, and and now into uh, October and November. Um, but that's median price. It's not actual uh, appreciation uh, changed that much because what what happens is larger, more expensive homes generally sell in the, the spring, summer, and then in this time of year, for whatever reason, there's less of those type of sales happening. So it's smaller little bit smaller homes uh, on average, which brings down the median price. Now, with that said, home prices did pull back a little bit from the peak here uh, a couple months ago to today. Um, but year over year, we're still somewhere around 6% in our market. It, you know, that, that's, again, you gotta, you gotta, anytime you hear these numbers, understand that every home's different, everything's a little bit different. But in general, we're, we're somewhere around 6% year over year price appreciation in Albuquerque right now. Um, the last story I wanted to address was this, this story or myth or belief that there's going to be all these bank owned homes coming on the market. And, and for whatever reason, I'm still hearing that. And it, it you know, so I, so I pulled some stats, right? I mean, you know, stats don't lie let's look at look at the data. So if we go back to uh, 2014, 2015, 2016, even into um, 2018, we always had in 2019 for that matter, but um, we had about a hundred homes a month coming onto the market that were owned by the bank, meaning that it was foreclosed on, the bank took it back into ownership and then put it back on the market and resold it. And there at that time, again, it was, you know, let's say 100 to 120 per month, all the way through 14, 15, all the way up to 2019. And then started in, in 2020, um, you know, <laughs> there, there weren't that many. Now, part of that was because of the pandemic, there was a, uh, basically, there were no foreclosures there for a while. And then there was this concern that, oh, you know, as soon as, foreclosures start happening again, we're going to get this flood of homes. Well, it didn't happen. And in fact, right now, uh, we're, we're averaging somewhere around 10 to 15 homes a month coming on the market that were that are owned by the bank. So right now, we're at like all-time low number of foreclosures coming onto the market in the Albuquerque. Now, that doesn't mean that there's maybe more in the pipeline, but there's nothing that that indicates that. And I'm going to give you one last thing. And this was a quote from uh, Rick uh, Sharga, who is, um, I think he's the chief economist at CoreLogic. Now, CoreLogic is one of these big uh, entities that has so much market data on every home, every mortgage, everything going on in the real estate world. And, and what he said is that 92% of the borrowers in foreclosure have positive equity. So even if somebody gets in a distress situation, meaning um, they, they can't keep up on their payment, they've gone into foreclosure, they still have the opportunity to sell that property and move on. And so, you know, there's just not a lot of distress, which is great in, in the market. And it's, 
it, and it's mostly because most people are in a very good equity position in their home. So, you know, obviously that could change in a year or two, just depending on what happens with the economy. But, but right now we just don't see those in the pipeline. That's it. Thanks for uh, listening, tuning in. It's Albuquerque Real Estate Talk with Tigo and Tracy Venturi, the Venturi Group of Real Broker at 505-448-8888. Have a great day. Take care.